Hello, welcome. In this video, I just want to show you an animation of the sine and cosine functions and how they connect to what we know in the unit circle. What you're going to see are two functions generated. The sine function is the red function, and it'll climb up, peak at pi over 2, where sine is 1, go back down to 0, back down to negative 1, and then finally back at 0 at 2, 2 pi. Cosine is the blue function. It'll start up here at 1, it'll cycle down to 0 at pi over 2, negative 1 at pi, back up to 0 at 3 pi over 2, and finally up to 1 at 2 pi. So you're going to see that, you're going to see me um, turn around the unit circle and then graph the sine and cosine from that turning, from that angle turning. So we'll go in radians here. So here it goes. It's a lot to look at at first. So there's the red function is sine peaking up to 1. And then cosine's at 0. It's going to go, cosine's going down here, so is sine. And then they're going to reverse directions. They're crossing where they're equal. And finally, when we go 2 pi radians, they finished one cycle of each function. And these waves will keep going as they turn more and more around the circle. But we're only going to look at the first cycle here to, to make sense of it. So here we have our sine wave, and there we have our cosine wave. And all that's happening is that these functions, their outputs, are corresponding to the heights of for sine, the height of the point in the unit circle, and for cosine, the x position of the point, the terminal point on the unit circle. So let's go through that. Let's highlight the uh, sine first. So this is our terminal point right here. And as we turn around, the height of that terminal point is the value of our sine function. So here, let's go to pi over 6. So at pi over 6 radians, the sine is 1 half. That's where this point is right here. This value is highlighting this point, so it's showing you that at pi over 6 radians, the sine is 1 half. Notice that the height of the sine function will always match the height of the terminal point on the unit circle. So here we go. See those heights match? They're always matching those heights. And all we're doing, since the sine function is the height of the terminal point on the unit circle, the height of the wave, the sine wave, is also equal to the height of the terminal point on the unit circle. And there it is. That's our cosine function. And then here is our cos... That was our sine function. Here's our cosine function. The cosine will always uh, rep be represented by the x value of our terminal point. It's the x value. So now the height of the cosine function is starting here at 1 because the x value of the terminal point starts at 1. So at 0 radians, the cosine is 1. And you can see that here in this terminal point. So there is something reversed here, right? They're 90 degrees apart right? The terminal point here and, or pi over 2 radians apart, and the output of the cosine here, right? There's a little 90 degree quarter term between them, and that will be mirrored, and you can see that, I should say, as we graph the cosine. So watch that, right? Here are the terminal points on the unit circle. Watch the cosine. When the terminal point reaches 1, the cosine reaches 0, right? So when the height of the terminal point is 1, the cosine is 0. And that's one way to look at it. That's confusing. You just remember that the, the x value of this terminal point right here is the height of our cosine function. So at pi over 2 radians, the height of the cosine wave is 0, because at pi over 2 radians, the x value of the terminal point is 0. Right. So the x value of this terminal point matches the output of our function. And you can see that here. So it's the x position of the terminal point that matches the height or the output of the cosine wave. And finally, at 2 pi radians, cosine is back at 1. Right? The output you can see up here is at 1. It's because the terminal point over here has an x value of 1 at 2 pi radians. And that, that wave continues. Right? But that's what one rotation looks like. So let's look at that one more time. Here's the sine animation and cosine animation. And if these waves continued, let's just zoom out, we'll see two cycles to 4 pi there. You can see that here's two rotations of the waves. They are the same wave, but they are pi over 2 uh, radians out of sync. 
So if you translate one of them over pi over 2 radians, you will get the exact uh, other wave. And that's something we've also seen in the unit circle, that the cosine and sine values, if you look again at zero, uh, 1, 0, this point here, and 0, 1 up here, notice that the, uh, the cosine of 0 is 1 equals the sine of pi over 2 radians. Right? And the, the, cos the sine of 0 is 0 is the cosine of pi over 2. Right? In other words, they're 90 degrees apart here. They're just kind of a quarter turn apart. And that's true about the waves as well. They're pi over 2 radians apart from each other. So therefore, it is possible. Since, since the cosine and sine are the same wave, but slightly, slightly translated, it is always, always possible to express the sine as a cosine wave and, and the reverse, the cosine as a sine. And this is just a gentle introduction. I'm not looking for details here. I'm just giving you an overview of how these things connect. All right, thanks.